good as fresh hunalik, like I'm about to cook here. It's got a different taste for sure. But like I said, I've already cut up the meat. Had just as much meat, and I cut it all up into thin steaks, and I can fry it later. Or you can boil it too, which is what the majority of people do. I mean, I'll boil up some of it. I like mine fried into steaks. It's really good that way. <coughs> but this is bowhead whale. If I didn't say that already, which is all of it. The bowhead whale. We don't hunt any other whales except for a beluga. So weird to me when I see other Inuits from Canada and whatnot hunting all those other kinds of whales. And I've heard they taste really good. The meats, I heard some of the meats on some of those other whales, like grey whale. I've heard the meat from grey whale or humpback whales. Even the fin whale tastes even better than bowhead meat, but maybe that's because they're more accustomed to it. I don't know. I'm just fine with this stuff. I'll eat this forever over anything. Trim off the outside edges like this outside, but like this outside, and clean it up. I think it'll be alright. I don't think I'm gonna get very much of a this year, so I'm cooking up all of it that I can. Later, we can make a pickled unalik, pickled mukta, which is pickled unalik. That'll be really delicious. You can also make fermented muktuk, which is what we call mikigak. You put the meat and muktuk and tongue in a bucket to ferment for, I forget, stir it three times a day every day. It'll start fermenting, and you can tell it'll start bubbling up. You have to keep stirring it so it doesn't bubble so much or too much. A lot of work but it's uh that's a delicacy that right there is what a true delicacy is you know you only make enough to consume and a few a few snacks there but this stuff you know we put this away and i could pull out a bag every few weeks for a long time if i wasn't barely getting full shares yeah, you see like this stuff right here, I'd usually cut that off, but I'm going to try to save as much of it as I can, because I don't know if I'm going to be getting any more this year. We don't eat it raw like this, right off the back, you know, right off the wheel. It kind of has no taste almost. It doesn't taste like anything really. It almost has a tint of, uh, it almost tastes like bleach. It really does. I think it's because it has those um, uh, gastric acids in it still that need to come out. Real kind of acids there. I think it's gastric, it's nitric acid, something like that. 
That's why I always wonder what that narwhal tastes like when our fellow Inuks in Canada eat those fresh narwhals. Start eating into the as soon as they pull up on the ice. Do they have taste? This won't hurt you to eat it like this. You know, back in our grandparents' day, they would. Because by the time they got pulling up a whale, they were kind of hungry. Almost starving sometimes. I should say they were starving a lot of times. And you know, we hear all kinds of stories of having bad winters, bad hunting years. They couldn't find the animals. Our whole village just got sick and there's no hunters to go out and get food. Sometimes there's only one or two hunters who didn't get sick and they had to feed the whole village. Go out every day. Getting anything they can, giving what little they caught from that day to different families just to keep them alive. Like when the diseases first came up, you know, I definitely wonder if we were a sterile people before the white man brought the diseases up here. No stories of huge sicknesses like that ever happened before they brought smallpox. Another sicknesses just wiped out tens of thousands of our people, three quarters of our people in most areas. People who came into contact with us at that time were white whalers. So I'm gonna start uh, putting this in the pot here. I'll get that piece cut up. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Yeah, put it all into the pot there. It's probably a pretty big pot. That's what I needed to cook it all in one bunch. Just cook it all in one time and get it done with because it will put a smell in this house. But uh, it'll, take a, it'll take most people a back a little bit because it's so strong. But to us, it's normal. It's what we grew up with and it's what we like. <laughs> It'll we'll definitely make everything in the house smell like it for a while. You go walk around for the next week, you're gonna smell like this stuff. But you know, we be sure to close all the bedroom doors where all our clothes are at and things like that, and that usually helps. So all in here now. Put a bunch of salt, probably four or five tablespoons of salt in there. And you just boil it for 20, probably 20 minutes. 30 minutes, check it out every once in a while. I still got some more. I'm gonna get another pot together, put that last piece and these last pieces in and cook it next to this one. I'll show you some more when it's done. Okay, so we got two pots done here. 
bit of big pots. We've got some big old tray laid out here. Another tray there. Big bowl. Excuse the mess here. Long day today. Clean all this up when I'm done. I'm just trying to get this done because it's late. There's my two tester pieces, and I've cut right through without any friction at all. Slice right through the fat like butter, and you know it's done. Got to get on that big pot there. So, well, made them all like this to cool off for a couple hours or so. And then we'll bag them all up, trim some of that fat off. But most people don't trim the fat off, they just throw it in bags. Freeze it once it cools off. Um, I like to just cut a little bit off so it's just ready to eat so it's going to heat back up again. That's what it looks like. My big long tongs here. You do have to be careful when you're boiling mukta because you're making wood on it because it can boil over. And if you have an open flame, which I don't, I've got an electric burner stove top, but I have done that before. I'm going to pull the two full in my young days and good thing I knew what to do as soon as it happened I grabbed a big five pound of flour and dumped it all over and turned the fire out but I had to, had to rinse all my own olive back off which was no big deal I only didn't bring the house down There's your nautic for you. Boiled muktuk. Fresh boiled muktuk. There is a difference between nautic and muktuk. We generally refer to muktuk as uh, aged muktuk. And nautic is nautic, just cooked muktuk. When we speak amongst each other, you know. You say you know. It's Unalik. We've got Unalik. We're eating Unalik tonight. We know what we're eating. If I say we're eating Muktuk tonight, then we know what we're eating. You know, it's aged Muktuk. Oh man, this is so good. I can't wait. See ya. Uh, feed ourselves with these precious animals. So thankful. Man. 